I made a trip out to Los Angeles to visit with Kevin Pike. Hey, video Bob. Kevin. Hey, come hey, on in, man. I'll you on the phone. Thanks, thanks. Come on in. Got lots to show you. Cool. Kevin was the special effects supervisor who was in charge of building the DeLorean time machines for the film Back to the Future. He gave me a quick tour of his home, and we reviewed some of his production materials and talked about how the car was built. Then we took a field trip out to where his film trick studios used to be before it was torn down and turned into a parking lot. Well, here we are. This is what's left. This was film tricks at one time. This was the place where we made the cars for Back to the Future. This was our office right here. This happened to be my, my office, the desk. My secretary over here. This was our conference area. Did everything here, artwork, made decisions. This is the door. It went out to the parking lot. We did a lot of work out here, rain gags, fire gags. We built big stuff outside. My 40-foot trailer park over here. And this is the shop, what was left of it. When we built the DeLoreans, it was all macadam. It wasn't even concrete then. The landlord poured the concrete for us later. And right here is the spot where we actually constructed the DeLorean. We built three of them right here in this shop. This concrete slab is about as big as it was. We had a shelf up for there. We had a loft on that end. We used to have all our makeup effects up there. This area over here was all our welding. I said it right here was a lot of the carpentry work that we did. The final shot that you see where that car is in my shop, and I have the rain wave van lines in my head. That was shot right about here with the car here. And that's where they came out the door and they went over to the studio and we shot them over there. Plug right here, if you tear that up, there's a plug in there that comes out for our table saw. We ran that through over to there and came out to the box and we had a plug and then when we wanted something smooth we could push that in and cap that off and have this perfectly smooth floor. We built a 60 by 40 cyclorama in here for a commercial that we did where we crunched a Lamborghini Countach. We built this loft. We had makeup effects upstairs. We had the foreman's office here. We had workbenches all through here. And in this 10,000 square feet slab we built time machine plus the speaker gags, all the electronic parts, everything else that we did. It's all different now. All of these cool stories have me fired up. Let's get to work. All right, we're here in Burbank, California at Apex Surplus. This is one of the main stores that Kevin and all of the crew found most of the parts to build the time machine. Let's go inside. We're here uh, in the hallways of Apex where there's all this surplus electronics and uh, we're looking to see if we find anything that we might recognize or things that were used on the car. You know, I'm definitely seeing things. There's, there's terminal strips, uh, some of these little relay things. Um, you know, what, what were you guys looking for in particular when you were scavenging through all this stuff? Did you uh, a plan or was it just, hey, that looks cool? Well, if you remember, uh, the history of was going on at that time. You know, we used to come here quite often for our surplus electronics when we wanted to make some custom panels or some computer panels or something for all the TV shows that were going on at Universal at the time. So this was a common place for us to come and, and play and, and we had an idea for things. But with the Glorian Time Machine, you know, we had some sketches and we had, uh, you know, some Ron Cobb pictures and some Andy Prober pictures. And then, of course, Michael Chaffe was big on helping finding the aesthetics and figuring out what goes where. Lots of those. Some of these we'd find and uh, they'd say, this would be cool, we'll put that on there. So did we have a plan? No, but we did have an idea and we had to make sure that it worked for the story. We had to make sure that it, it worked for the gags in the film. Yeah. And, and we would just come and rummage and say, this would be cool, you know, here's this hose. We could take this hose and make it work. Or, and we could add this here and make this end go there. So it was designed but some of it was functional, so some I'm already of recognizing some stuff. These here, now these these aren't go. the right ones, but... Okay, this is like one of the Holy Grails. There's some bigger ones right there that yeah. you could use. Uh, and they're, you know, stretched for a helicopter. Um, the ones on our car are a little shorter and a little fatter, but that's exactly the kind of stuff that we found. We said, you know what, these are kind of interesting. They could fill in this space, and you'll see a lot of hoses like this going on there, and then here's some of these blue capacitors yeah. which are often you know a couple of those on that one side of the car those are look, these are pretty common capacitors but the hard job for me now is to find the exact same size shape uh, and model that you guys found 
25 years ago, and, and there's there's lots of different ones of all different sizes and shapes. The hard part is finding the same one. Well, you have to understand that when we built the car, we were going to make one car, one kind, one way. And if I had known that I would be back here 25 years later, I would have made a notebook of everything that we bought and found and purchased. But it wasn't just me. It was Mike Chaffe and and all the rest of the guys that would come here and buy parts that went on the car. And um, it, it was just uh, a one-off. And so at, at no time do we ever think that, well, we better make sure that in the future, 25 years from now, we have a list that we can give to all these fans that like to make their own cars. That was part of the requirements. You, you guys knew you were making three cars. We made so three cars. but get three of everything? Well, the first car had everything. The second car was not supposed to have any of the interior stuff. But uh, as it turned out, that ended up being exactly what happened and then the third car we kind of sliced up and just basically had to have the front part of it together because we could look over the shoulder and out through the windshield for that How kind long of stuff. has been since you've been here? Dave? I don't think I've been here in the last maybe 15 years um, because a lot of the stuff, a lot of the designs and a lot of the stuff is different now. It's not some of this older retro stuff that applied. A lot of this post-war stuff that we used to use all the time. Um, but they still have stuff that we can use in our business and special effects world, so that's great. We would just come in here and we'd kind of look for things that made sense and was attractive and would kind of tell the story. And, and this looks a lot like the power supply that's in the center console, so, except it's a little smaller. But that's the whole idea though. We said, well this will work, this is the right size, this has got look on it. We could put a light inside there and light it up and give it some element. And, uh, Give it some something interesting, make something interesting out of it. But we used to come here all the time for all kinds of things. And then it's just a matter of finding those pieces that made the car look proper, told the story, and could work functionally. I mean, a lot of this stuff, we had to make sure that it could work or make it work. Or we used it for a different purpose than what it was obviously originally intended to do. And sometimes it was just a, a big aesthetic element. I'm definitely going to need a roll of that orange. You guys love orange and red wire. And this is where we got the orange and red wire. You know, we spent a lot of time here on all the different shows at Universal. And then, of course, Close Encounters, uh, which we did. Uh, we came here and got a lot of the electronics that we needed for a big sign that played out. That was uh, a little bit of fun to before. Back to the Future that we did. And uh, all, of these, all of this surplus was stuff we used. They've got everything in here, including the kitchen sink. And there it is. There's uh, more cable out here, more spools. Um, they used to joke and say that when you go in here, you have to tie a rope around your waist so that if something falls over on you, they can pull you out. Um, I can remember in the old days, we would dig and dig and dig. We found a headlight. And then we realized that it was actually attached to a car. And underneath all the stuff that they had here, they had cars. It was amazing. So we used a lot of these connectors. We would uh, you know, put a hose in here and use these to kind of marry into the box to make it look like it's actually doing some functionality. And a lot of these elbows and everything that you can see, we, we used um, just part of the design. Different kinds of cable connectors. Anything that gave it this industrial, but most importantly was its homemade look, like Doc Brown had, had made it all by himself. And this is indicative of what we would do, and we'd put a rubber hose on here and attach it with screws or glue or some kind of fastener to make it work. Um, and it was just a matter of whether it was going to be used to make a gag work. Here is what you're looking for. These are the the heavy duty ones, and then and this is uh, part of the idea for the disconnection of the paddle plugs um, on the cable that brings the electricity down to the cable that went across the street. There we go. And this is the other part. This is the kind of thing we actually made a little needle on this, and this is what hooked on Doc Brown's cuff, and was typical of the kind of bikes that we used at the time. Uh, connection. It's a different brand. That's, that's the premise that when Bob was coming up with the idea for what it would do and what it should look like. Right there in front of us on the stage floor and I said, how about this? This would work. And that's how it became. It's 
you know? This is like archaeology. Except instead of digging up dinosaur bones, we're digging up a time machine. So here's a kind of idea. Remember these little rocker switches? We had these right in the steering wheel. Singles, red and green. And a lot of, a lot of these little switches, little momentary switches doing different things. We actually use them to turn stuff on and off in the car. Some of those actually work. These, these are, these are beautiful. These, um, you know, you, you never seen them in the, they're not seen in the movie. Um, but when we went and looked at the original car, noticed that up in the upper console, again, it's never even seen in the film, but I, I want to replicate every detail uh, because it's there. It doesn't matter to me whether or not it was seen in the film. These were in there. And we're going to put them into our replica. And uh, what's amazing is this box and all of these parts were probably here all those years ago. And they're still here. I mean, these, I don't know if these have a, look, A865. So that means these were made in 1960, or they were packaged and put in here in 1965 uh, in August. And here they are, and they've never even been opened. I'm just waiting for some nerd like myself to show up and <laughs> build a time machine out of a DeLorean. We got everything we need from Apex, but there's still a few more parts that we need to get. Do you have an idea where we could get those? I've got a lot of places in mind. As I haven't been in a long time, but we can go back. All right, let's go. Well, we are here at Norton Rocketry in uh, Burbank, and there is not another place like this on the planet. This is a junkyard for. Uh, I don't even know what, you, what this stuff is. It's like rockets and jet aircraft. Um, and there are things in this building that you will not find any place else on Earth. And this is the type of stuff where Doc Brown would go to get the parts for his time machine. And this is the same type of stuff that Kevin Pike and his crew uh, use on the time machine. There's row after row of uh, jet engine parts, uh, high pressure, fittings, um, tanks. You can see uh, some of the things that, that are in this place um, are, are not the kind of things you would find in your average junk. Like if you were stranded on Earth and you needed to build a spaceship to get off, this is the place where you would get the parts. And uh, this is where we're going to find some of the missing components of our Back to the Future DeLorean time machine. All right, so. Bob, this is the place we used to come to years ago. It used to be called Joe Factors, and we could come and get all the kind of little connector parts that we needed here, a lot of the screws, a lot of the fasteners, lots of hoses. So what is it you're looking for again? Well, uh, on the back of the car, you'll remember seeing these uh, tanks, and there's this tube, which oh, sure. I have. Oh, sure. I just need these little clamps to hold it on. Yeah, you want me to remember what I did 25 years ago? I got yeah. an idea. Let's go inside. Let's go. Wait, I think I'm getting close. I think I know where they are. I hope so, I'm getting tired. Yeah, I think it's down here. It's always the last place you look. Here it is. These? Yeah, that's the ones. Let's see. Those look like the ones to me. Not bad after 25 years, huh? Well, let's build a time machine. So, make sure I understand. What is, what is it that you're looking well, for now? You know, on, on the back of the car, you've got all these different braided high pressure hoses. They're all over the car. Where, where, where do you get these hoses? Let me think if I can remember. So here's another treasure trove of, of stuff that we used on the car. You can come here and get everything that you need at Lukey's. I think we have everything we need to build the time machine. Let's get back to Dallas and start putting it together. Once I got back in my shop in Dallas, my crew and I got to work on the DeLorean time machine and applied many of the parts I found out in California and also added props I have been building for the last few years to get ready for the final assembly of the car.
All of the electronics have to be tested to make sure they are all working correctly. Precision alignments are needed for the assembly to go smoothly. All the dimensions are checked and compared to those gotten from the original cars at Universal Studios. After about a month of assembly, the car is finally ready to make its journey to Atlanta to be sold on the Discovery Channel hit show, Auction Kings.